Uh, here's my friend Joe. You're a Christian? That's right, yeah. What does that mean? It means that I put my faith in Jesus Christ and I believe the Bible. You believe the Bible? I believe it. So you can answer some of these questions? I hope so, yeah, I'll do my best. Right, if I asked you this question. If God created everything good, why is there evil? Good question, yeah. Uh, well, it's very simple. In one sense it's simple, but it, it, it's, it's very difficult. Um, the reason that there's evil in the world is because Adam and Eve, as you probably know, in the Garden of Eden, they disobeyed God. God created the world perfectly, but Adam and Eve broke uh, God's rules, ate of that fruit, and that's why there's evil in the world. What do you think of that? Does that make sense? If God's so good, why is it evil? What do you think of that answer? What about this? Why doesn't God stop the suffering? I can't multitask if you give me. <laughs> Why did God stop? Well he, well, he is going to one day. I mean, I'll tell you why God has not stopped suffering. Many people say, why has God not stopped all the evil? Why has God not stopped all the pain? You know, those shooters who go into schools, why didn't God stop that? Why is there all the wars still going on there? People ask that question a lot. And the reason is very, very simple. Because if God stops the suffering, if God stops the pain, he's got to do a very thorough job. Let me put it another way. Have you ever caused pain in this world? Is there anyone in Southport right now who has ever caused pain in this world? I've caused pain. I've told lies. That causes pain. I've made my wife cry. That causes pain. I have caused pain. And the fact is this. If God is going to wipe out all the pain, he's got to do it thoroughly. And that means he's got to deal with you and me. But he's waiting for us. He's given us a chance to come to him in repentance and find forgiveness. Joe, you've answered a couple of questions there. Have you always believed this? Uh, not always, no. Not always? No. So you weren't born a Christian? I wasn't born a Christian. Well, when did you become a Christian? When I was 19. 19? So for 19 years, 19 years, you rejected Jesus Christ? That's right. Did you know about him? I didn't know about him, yeah. So you willfully rejected him. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, I willfully reje rejected him. So when you were 18, if you hadn't been in a car crash, I'm glad that you haven't been, but if you hadn't been in a car crash and died, where would you be in eternity? I'd, I'd go to hell. I'd be in hell because I've rejected Jesus. That's a bit strong, isn't it? So if my friend Joe, who became a Christian when he was 19, and had died when he was 18, he says he's been in hell. Wow, that's a bit strong. So you really believe there's a hell? I really believe there's a hell, yeah. That's why we're out here today. And you've t told us God is good. And he's good, yeah. So when you were 19, what happened to change you on, from that destination of hell to go on the destination of heaven? Yeah. What changed? There's a lot of things, but uh, very briefly, I went to a party and I'd been to parties before and I'd done things at parties before that you do at parties if you like um, and I just came away from that party feeling really really dirty really unclean and I remember getting in the shower and it was almost as if I was trying to scrub the sin off me and I just couldn't get it get this this uncleanness away from me feeling so like guilty if that makes sense and then I came to the cross and realized my sins could be forgiven there and they were dealt with when Jesus died there in my place. All right, so, so you put your trust in this person, Jesus, that lived 2,000 years ago. That's right, yeah. And he affects your life today. That's right, yeah. So Joe, so that was when you were 19. How old are you now? Uh, I'm 31. <laughs> 31? Yeah. Uh, you married? I'm married. Married to? Emma. Emma, how long have you been married for? 2014, so. Nine years. Nine years? Does he remember his anniversary? Yeah, uh, October the 17th. Oh, I'm going to check with Anna later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how many children have you got? Two. Two children. Now, obviously, you're a good dad. Uh, I, I think there are better dads, to be honest. Yeah. There's, there's better dads, but yeah. you want to set your children a good example. Yeah, I do. I want to. Yeah. And you've found Christianity. That's the best way to set your children a good example? A hundred percent, yeah. No, I, I don't know how. Yeah, I'm not judging anyone, but I just think, you know, if, if you 
you take God out of the picture these days, our kids are confused. They don't know anything. You know, they're, they're hurting. And um, you know, if, if, if I can say something really shocking right now, we go back to when your grandparents were teenagers. Do you think the rate of suicides increased or decreased? It's increased, hasn't it? And, and the reason for this is our young people, they, they go into school and the first thing they're told is you're an animal, you know? You came from a bit of slime for millions of years. Uh, and then they say, so effectively I've got no purpose, no meaning. And we're all sort of messed up. Hey, Don. Uh, we're all messed up and, uh, you know, and that's why we need, we need Jesus. We need someone to keep us centered. And God's rules are, are eternal. They never, they never go away. So I, I'm pleased that the Ten Commandments exist. Last question. Now, I've got a, a, a question. Why should I trust the Bible? Now, obviously, you're not getting this from just ideas in your head. There's a book called the Bible. Why should I trust this book? Hasn't it been changed? Is it full of contradictions? You know, it's just an old book. Years ago. Why should I trust it? Yeah, this, this, yeah. the first reason I would say that the most important reason we trust it because it's God's word. And because Jesus Christ, who died and then rose from the dead, he, he said it's true, and if he rose from the dead, the evidence is that Jesus doesn't lie. He said, I'm going to rise from the dead, and he did it, but so the evidence is that it, it would be true in that sense. But also, if you actually do look at it as a historical book, it weighs up. You know, you can go to John Ryland's uh, museum in Manchester, and you can find a manuscript that was written at the time when, the, when Jesus was around. So it wasn't just a case of Chinese whispers and it's been passed down. No, there's real manuscripts, there's real evidence behind it. But the sad reality is most people don't want to look into that in detail. Thanks, Joe. I'll let you know stand up. Friends, we're just uh, considering why life is so important. I've got, a, I've got more than one friend than Joe. I'm going to ask a school teacher now to step up and... Yes. This is Wes. How old are you, Wes, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I'm 25 years old. 25 years old. I said you're a school teacher. What do you teach? I teach computer science. Computer science. Is that the easy one? Well, personally, I think it's quite difficult, but maybe some people find it easy. So, so what age group do you teach computer science to? So secondary school. So secondary school. Yeah. Secondary school. Wow, that's, that's a challenging job, isn't it? And Wes, you're a Christian? Yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian. What makes you a Christian? Uh, I'm a Christian because about 10 years ago, I acknowledged that I was a sinner before God. And I went to him and I asked for forgiveness. And I accepted him as my saviour. And how has your life changed since? Uh, many, many ways my life's changed, but all of them for the better. Well, all of them for the better. I'm, you know, now I've got hope in life. I've got joy, uh, I can go to trust in God, and I don't need to worry what's going on around the world. So, my friend Joe before was talking about hell. So, do you believe in this place called hell? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it exists. Do you believe it? 100%. So, what happens in hell? The hell is really not a nice place. I don't think anybody would ever want to go there, but the Bible describes it as almost being like a lake of fire. It's just. A lake, a lake of fire? Yeah. Yeah, horrendous place that, you know, people are actually there, they're fully conscious. You know, they're aware of what's going on and they can, they've still got the same feelings that we'd have on earth. So, so why do people go to hell if God is so good? Well, the Bible says that we've all fallen short. We've all done wrong. We've all sinned against God. We've broken God's commands and his rules. And when we break something, when, you know, when we look in life, when crime is being carried out, things are going wrong, there has to be some kind of punishment. And God's punishment for the sin or the wrong that we do is this place called hell. Now, come on. Let me ask you a question off this board. Now, computer science. Yeah? Yeah. This is to my friend, a school teacher. Where is he? He's Christian. Hasn't science disproved God? How can you say, you computer science, hasn't science disproved God? Come on, you don't still believe in that God, come on. Well, you know, when we, when we go to school, we get taught a certain curriculum, and on that curriculum, set by the government, okay? And a lot of that, when you look into it, it doesn't add up, okay? Now, 
as children, you just go and you listen to these things and you just listen to what you're told. Yeah, you believe them because we like to listen to people who are adults, people who might be in charge, and we listen to our teachers, we trust them. But when you really step back and you start to question these things and you look at them for yourself, you'll see that this isn't a very, very solid ed argument. There isn't a lot of evidence to prove that we came from apes or that we came from this thing called the Big Bang. And so you have to start looking in other places, questioning, this is what I did, you question if we didn't come from this, then where did we come from? Okay? And I don't think we can just come from nothing. There has to be some kind of creator that's created us. So you believe in creation? 100%, yeah. Creation. 100%? Well, and I can't change your mind about that. Not changing, no. A lot of people have tried to change my mind. Yeah. Well, come on. Why should I put my trust in Jesus? Why must I? That's okay. question was. Well, it's Easter weekend. Today we call it Good Friday. And there, re there is a reason why we call it Good Friday. So if we go back just over 2,000 years ago, we know that this man, Jesus, was a real man. He was a real person who lived on this world. And if we read the Bible, we know that God sent Jesus down. It was God's son, and he came down for this purpose. For this weekend, he came down to die for us. And he lived a life that was perfect. So I said that I've broken God's law. We've all broken God's law because we've all done wrong in life. But this man, Jesus, he didn't do anything wrong. He lived a life that was perfect and without sin, without any fault. And what the people at the time did to him was they crucified him. So they took him, they nailed him to a cross. And when he was on that cross, he was bearing the sin that we should have bore, okay? So our, our things that we've done wrong, so when we lie, when we cheat, when we steal, when we disobey our parents, all of those things, Christ was taking the punishment. And he took that punishment for us so that we can be forgiven. So instead of us having to take the punishment and going to the place where we need to, Christ did that so that when we go to him, we ask him for forgiveness, we put our trust in him, then we can go to be with him in this place called heaven, which is our heavenly eternal home that God wants to be with him forever and ever. That was your last question. Thank you for your time. Now there's a man behind the camera. Now, West teaches teenagers at a proper school. Now we've got somebody that teaches younger people in our midst, Paul. And I'm going to ask you a few questions. Have you got children of your own? Yeah. Yeah. How many children have you got? Five. Five children. Wow. <laughs> That's why I've lost all my hair. <laughs> Five children. How old are you? Me? 48. 48. Now come on, do you believe the Lord Jesus Christ, or the Lord Jesus Christ? I absolutely do. So you're a Christian? Yeah. That's how you describe yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 48 years old, five children, how old's your oldest? 16. 16? Yeah. Wow. I'm a... I'm a nice the oldest. Oh, yeah. Good to see you. You know, you know, I'm actually a Christian man, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you talk to my mate over there? Yeah, yeah, I used to follow Buddhism, yeah. 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 And then when I followed that, it, I realised it was a cult. They yeah. turned their back on me. Yeah. You know, because of that, oh. that, oh, that, that. It's like, yeah, false idols, false idols. Oh, do you know what? He, 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 no, they, they he laughed at me. My, my mate would love to talk to you. Lewis, thank you. Okay, Lewis. <laughs> you know right, okay. Lewis. Are all religions? The same. They are complete. Some are very, very similar. Some are very, very similar, but they are not all the same. But there's one that is completely different from all the others. So you're saying lots of them are the, like, the same, but there's one that is completely different. Yeah. Lots of them have very, very similar similarities, but there's one that is completely unique from all the others, and in a couple of ways, but one way particular. Okay, tell me what's unique about this different one. Right, well, one of them says that you cannot get to heaven. 
You cannot make it to heaven based on what you do, okay? Whereas all the other religions say that you can get to heaven if you just do this, 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 this and this. If you just be a good person and the good outweighs the bad, you can get to heaven. That's what all the other religions say. But one religion says, no, you cannot work your way to heaven. The only way you can get to heaven is by what Jesus has done on the cross and by your trust in him. It's in your faith in Christ alone that gets you to heaven. And that's what makes my religion unique to all the other religions in the world. So you are saying to me, Paul, you've got it right and all the other religions have got it wrong. Now they're in the majority, come on. Why should I believe you rather than all the other religions? Well, first of all, just because the majority believe something different to myself does not mean they are right. We've got a question board over there which we're going to put back up again this afternoon and as you're walking past you can vote on it and it says, do you believe in the afterlife? Now, if at the end of the day the majority says no and the minority says yes, there is an afterlife, that doesn't make it, it, it correct that there is no afterlife, does it? And I'll tell you why it doesn't make it correct because Jesus said that wide is the way that leads to destruction and many people are on that path and there's many people today in Southport and you're all going in a particular direction all right and Jesus said wide is the way that leads to destruction and there are many on that path but he also said narrow is the way that leads to life and there are only a few people on it so even though there's a minority who are born again believers in Jesus Christ and the, the number is getting less and less by the day, that does not mean that he's not correct. Oh. Okay, what about this? Why do Christians do bad things? That is a very good question. Why do Christians do bad things? And, and it's a problem because lots of people put the faith in Christians, you know, or even the faith in a vicar and, uh, or a faith in a pastor. Uh, and they do something wrong and they mess up and they say oh I don't believe in Christianity because of this but they might have had a friend who was a Christian and they may have upset them or, or done something against them and they probably thought oh I, you can keep your Christianity because I had a friend who was a Christian and this is what they did or that's what they did uh, so you can forget it so that is that is a huge problem all right? I realise I've not answered the question a bit like a politician there <laughs> the question actually says why do Christians do bad things? I'm just e emphasising why that's a problem, <coughs> that Christians do bad things. But why do they do bad things? I'll tell you why they do bad things. Because we are not perfect. We're not perfect. We are still in our human bodies, and our human bodies make bad decisions and do wrong things. Okay? But the point is this. We still do things wrong because we are not perfect. But there was one human being who was perfect. Do you know who it is, sir? Anybody guess who it is? The one person who was absolutely perfect. Who do you think it was? So I'll tell you who it was. Who's the one person who's never done anything wrong in the whole world? The one human. Any ideas? Hey, it's you, is it? Well, you've just done something wrong now because you've lied. <laughs> I bet your mum will tell the truth, won't she? Now, the thing is this. The one person who's never done anything wrong. Do you know who it is, sir? No, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. It's Jesus. Jesus is the only person who never did anything wrong and that is really important that because he was perfect he could be the perfect sacrifice for us his life was not demanded of him like my life is like other Christians lives are demanded of them because Christians do things wrong but because Jesus was perfect he could die for all the wrong things that we've done and he could pay the punishment that we deserve because he was perfect that's what it means uh, to be a Christian, to put your trust in Christ, not put your trust in yourself, and don't you put your trust in yourself, and don't you put your trust in other Christians, because they will let you down. But the one person who will never let you down is the Lord Jesus, so you can come to him. So, last question, are you sure that you're going to heaven, and why? I am 100% sure that I'm going to heaven, based on that last question, because I know that it's not based on what I can do. It's not based on my goodness. The reason I am absolutely convinced that I'm going to heaven, 100% convinced, is because it's not based on me and my goodness, and I'm not good. 
is based on Jesus Christ and his goodness. And he was good. And he was perfect. So based on his record, I know I'm going to heaven. 